In response to a JPEG of a Reddit question asking, what was the incident in your high school? Twitter user Dean Lines responds, when I was like 14 years old, me and a few mates would skip French class and hide out in the soundproof drum room until lunchtime. This went on for a few weeks, when one day we discovered a trap door beneath the carpet tiled floor under the drum kit. We of course opened the door. Turned out, it was an access hatch to a series of small tunnels giving access to the heating pipes that ran around the school. Small but big enough to get on our hands and knees and crawl around a bit. On the first day, we got about 50 meters before we had to turn back. We were all filthy from doing this, but it was a thrill being underneath classrooms and hearing lessons going on above us. That's when I had an idea that became an obsession. You see, our high school was horseshoe shaped, symmetrical. Every room, one wing had a direct opposite. And the opposite room to the soundproof drum room on the other side of the horseshoe? Why, it was the vending machine storeroom. This is when your eyes may dart to the sheer size of the absolute unit that is Dean Lines. Godspeed, Dean Lines. Godspeed. I figured if there was an access hatch in the drum room, there must be one in its mirror. The one leading to Aladdin's cave of chocolates and sweets. It would be the perfect heist. The door locked, we'd rock up from beneath the floor, grab as much as we can sneak, and get back. Only problem was, we had to make it the full length of the entire horseshoe shape to get there. What a music out really loud right there, what the fuck? Crawl under dozens of classrooms and offices. We planned this shit like a military op. It took us three weeks. Figuring out how far it was, it was about a quarter mile. How long it would take to crawl it on our hands and knees. We had torches, changes of clothes, bags, even a knife. Should we have to cut through the carpet to get in? So the day comes. There were six of us. One would stay in the drum room to keep an eye on the door, while the others would head into the tunnels, figuring we could get in and out inside of 45 minutes stash the sweets, and be on our next class creating an alibi if we needed to. So off we went. I was second in line with my mate Maddie, just ahead of the three behind me. Maddie was first, as he had one of those torches on a headband. Oh, you mean like fucking flashlights. Sorry, we're in America. I had some giant upright fake army thing that was weak as shit. Right away, things were off. The heating was now on, for one thing. <laughs> Y'all will be lucky to get out of this with your life. It was off the first time that we were down here. Now we had red hot pipes running along sides of us inches from our face. What started out with nervous giggling and hushed jokes was now serious as a heart attack and kind of scary. We were like 10 minutes deep and under the science labs. We could hear a science lesson going on above us as we turned the first corner, losing all sight of the drum room trap door. That's when Maddie's headband torch ran out of batteries. Is this a tomb? I had to give him mine to continue. We trudged on. About five minutes later, it happened. I felt my hand push into something wet, soggy. Now, these were concrete tunnels. 
Up until now, it had been bone dry and dusty. I get George behind me to shine his torch by my left hand to see what it was. It was a dead fox. I had pushed my hand through its rotting chest cavity. Cavity's what you'd get with the candy that you guys are going for. Is that, did anybody? Okay. My hand was black with the half rotted blood and flesh and I started to retch. That's what, that's what that sounds. Maddie in front spins and the flashlight lit panic sees me holding my hand out. Wait. Okay, my Maddie in front spins and in the flash lit and the flashlight lit panic sees me holding my hand out and then the face of the fox. Its dried lips pulled back revealing its sharp yellow teeth. He starts screaming, thinking it's attacking us. We completely lose our shit, everyone is screaming, bumping into burning pipes, which in turn makes us scream in shock and pain as we have no room to turn around, we can only back up at speed, moving blind, bumping into each other, swearing and bickering all the way back to the drum room. We must have passed under at least 10 classrooms where everyone can hear all those crazy sounds coming from under the floor. But amazingly, we get back to the drum room, grab all of our shit, get out of there before we're caught. The heist failed. But we lived to fight another day. A week later, we came back even more prepared with stolen gloves and smasks. You ever heard of a smask? <laughs> the science labs and a fucking dustpan and a brush. Nice. We were going to clean up any mess that we were bumping into this time. Nothing was going to get between us and the sweets in that storeroom. Or so we thought. The day of French class comes. We're already to duck out as usual. When an emergency assembly is called. It turns out despite the vow of secrecy between us, word was out about the tunnels and the plan. The morning the music teacher, or that morning the music teacher was preparing for class, she steps into the drum room to find the carpet pulled back and the trap door open and 28 kids down in the hatch? Homie, wait a minute, 28? I can't even count that on my hands like three times. One, two. No, I could, cause that's 30. Well, almost. It was a fucking free for all. Everyone knew about the tunnels now. It turns out there was one in the boys changing room too, and kids were going down there too. They had to call the fire brigade and then a police dog handler to make sure no kids were still down there. It was fucking madness. The entire school was warned off of looking for more access points. Told of the danger of the tunnels. That if they caught anyone down there, they'd be suspended permanently. So yeah, that was the incident in my high school. Isn't this Elliot from Internet Today going, damn, they really wanted those snacks. I think it's only showing it to me because I'm following this Jiro Woms. My gods, it was like Goonies, but instead of one-eyed Willie's gold, it was sweets. And instead of a skeleton, it was a dead fox. I'm calling Hollywood. It is just the Goonies. Also, spoilers for the Goonies. What are you? What? Hey, I'm sorry. Claire says, I'm sitting in Stansted with actual tears running down my face from reading this. Hashtag, I love Twitter. What? <laughs> Now modify the story so that you can come across the body of a former pupil in the, in the tunnel. Clutching a bag of sweets. That's some Stephen King shit right there. Yeah, they could adapt it into a movie that's like really good. And then they'll have a part two and people will go, Ugh, I don't know about this one. See what I did there? That's like an 
An it reference? Isn't this joke funnier when I explain it? I thought the story would be better than it was, but it's not bad. Pretty good. Good shit Dean lines. You know, in this case, I was more than willing to read between the lines. It's jokes like that that get me paid the no bucks. Later.